Hi and welcome to this tutorial. This is the first part of a three-part series on how to make a memory box. I call it a memory box because it contains all sorts of memorabilia of a certain period or event, in this case a road trip. It consists of an album with pictures as well as a tray filled with rocks and other debris from all the places I visited. This first part of the three-part series will focus on the album itself. The materials used in this project are all conservation-grade materials, meaning that they are acidic and other hazardous materials free, so that the pictures and other items will be preserved as good as possible for as long as possible. The photo album we're going to make consists of signatures of acid-free paper intertwined with acid-free, conservation-grade silk paper. The reason we do this is because pictures of opposite pages would touch each other when the album is closed. This would result in ink migration and superficial degradation of the pictures. We are using four sheets of paper intertwined with five sheets of silk paper. Slide all of the paper into each other to form one signature. I'm using my bone folder here to fold the pages in half, as this will make for a nicer and crisper fold than when using your fingers. Fold all of the paper in half and then start intertwining them by laying them on top of each other. The silk paper we are using is slightly taller than the paper itself. This is not an issue because the edges will be cut flush after everything is bound together. Then close them again to form a signature. Keep doing this for every signature. Once you reach the required number of signatures for the amount of pictures you have, stack all of them together and line them up as good as possible. It helps to put some heavy books on top to hold everything down. After you've aligned all the signatures, calculate starting from the middle how many rows of sewing you will use. Every 3 to 4 centimeters should be fine, of course depending on the size of your album. Next, draw perpendicular lines where the sewing will be. Then, use a knife to make incisions there where you drew your lines. This might seem scary at first, but the paper stacks up pretty thick, so don't be afraid to get deep enough. The incisions have to be deep enough to make it all the way through the stack of paper. Pinch your signatures together to help the knife cut through more easily. Once all incisions are made, it is time to make the paper strips that are going to reinforce the spine. Traditionally, this is done with either strips of linen or linen cord, but I decided to use paper strips for once. Just take some of your acid-free paper Cut them down to length and glue them together by folding them over multiple times. The width of the strips needs to be just shy of the space between two rows of holes or incisions. To hold the strips in place, you have to tape them to your table underneath your album and then use whatever you have so you can secure them at the top as well. After attaching them, you can put aside all signatures but one. At this point, we are ready to start sewing. Preferably, you would use waxed thread, as this will help pulling the thread through the holes. Start by entering your signature from the outside all the way on the right towards the inside. Now come out of the next hole from the inside towards the outside, then over the first paper strip and back into the next hole. 
Repeat this until you arrive at the last hole. You should have your needle coming from the inside to the outside. Then take your next signature and place it on top. Enter the first hole of that signature from the outside to the inside and keep repeating the previous steps until you arrive at the last hole again. If you have trouble getting your needle through all the holes, this probably means you haven't made your incision deep enough. You can solve this by first poking the needle through the other side to connect the holes. You can see I'm using a ruler inside my signature. This helps me find the middle of my signature more easily. Make sure to pull the thread tight along the strips of paper, but not in between the signatures. I pulled just a little too tight and you will see in the end result that the spine of the album will not be thick enough to account for all the pictures in the album itself. So make sure not to pull them too tight. The end of your thread, where you first entered the signature, will now meet with your needle. Pull it through along with the rest of the thread and make a simple knot between the two ends. This will secure the signature and make sure that not all of the stress on the thread is accumulated, but rather separated by these knots. After tying the knot, take the next signature and repeat the same process until all of the signatures are sewn together. When you're finished sewing, cut off any remaining thread and cut loose the paper strips. The next step is gluing up the spine. Take a medium sized brush and acid free glue and apply a good amount of glue all along the spine. After the glue has hardened, remove the books and grab some more of the same paper you used for the pages. Fold the paper on itself a couple of times to create a thick strip of paper that is the same height as the spine of the book block. This strip will help reinforce the spine. Once again, apply glue to the spine and attach the strip of paper. Once it has all dried, the next step is to trim the edges of the book. You could do this with a ruler and an X-Acto knife, but the easiest and most accurate solution is to go to your local copy shop or print shop and use their electric guillotine. The result will look much more professional.
After some consideration, I decided to get rid of the paper strips because I didn't want them to show up through the end papers. The next step is to make the front and end pages. Take two sheets of paper, fold them in half and glue them to the first and last pages of the book block. These are what are called the end pages and they will be glued to the book cover later on in this tutorial. I'm inserting a piece of silk paper underneath the first page to not get any glue where I don't want it. Again, press them down with some heavy books. Once dry, trim off the excess paper around the book block. Now that the book block is finished, we can start with the book cover. For this, you will need some bookboard and some fabric. I'm using acid-free bookboard that is 3 mm thick. We need two equal pieces of board that are about 1 cm longer and wider than the book block itself. I just lay the book down and measure 0.5 up and 0.5 down and mark it. It is very important to make sure that the grain of the board is running parallel to the spine. Then measure and mark the long side of the book. When cutting these pieces, I like to take down my ruler. This way I'm sure it will not move during the cutting itself. The most accurate cut is obtained by first lightly scribing the line and then gradually applying more and more pressure. Once the first board is cut, move it over and use it to cut the second board. Next, measure the height of your spine and cut a piece of board of the same width. This will be used as a spacer between the two boards. Then roll out your fabric and place the boards down. We need a piece of fabric that will overlap the edges for about 2 cm. So measure and cut this piece of fabric. Then lay the piece in front of you and apply glue to the first board. Now 
flip it around and lay it down on the fabric. Press it down using an ink roller, moving from the middle of the board to the outside, pressing out all the air bubbles. Then lay down a piece of scrap paper and apply glue to the second board. Use the spacer we made earlier to space the two boards, then check for squareness with a ruler. I let the ruler sit there, so I can just lay the boards in place, and I know it will be in the right position. Remove the spacer and use the ink roller again. Next, cut a piece of paper that is the same height as the boards and is slightly wider than the spine. Because we are not using a hard spine here, we need to reinforce it with some paper. Use your bone folder to first press the paper tight on one board and then on the other. The next step is called turning in the edges. To do this, we first need to remove the excess material. Use a piece of board of the same thickness and place it at a 45 degree angle to your corner and cut away the excess fabric. Repeat this on all corners. Then apply glue and turn the edges in. The first edges to be turned in are the top and bottom one. First, Rub along the entire length with your bone folder and then hold it at a 45 degree angle and go from the inside to the outside of the book board. This way any excess glue will be pushed out to the side where you can just clean it up. Repeat this on the other edges. Here's an example of how a corner is turned in. Then take your book block and dry fit it inside your case. Make sure to place it exactly in the middle. Then apply glue to the top of your book block and close the case on top of it. Make sure everything is properly aligned. Use the bone folder to scribe the spine. Flip the book over and repeat the same process.
then press it down one final time with some heavy books or put it in a book press. And here's the finished photo album. The only thing left to do now is to add your pictures. In the second part of this series, we will focus on making the trays. Thank you for watching and see you next time.